Kia ora, welcome back. I'm the Kiwi Coder, and this is episode 5 of AI. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to create a custom weapon IK constraint where we can aim an agent's weapon at a given target by adjusting the spine bones. Cool, so let's get into it. You can check out the previous episode in the link above. Cool, so I've got a test character in the scene here that's just playing a simple equip animation uh, in a single animation state, and I've parented a weapon to the right hand of that character. There's a, the weapon has got a child object called Raycast, which is the one that will align with the target. So start by adding a debug draw line component to the Raycast object, and in this, uh, we're just going to use on draw gizmos to draw a debug line in the uh, object transforms forward direction. Uh, this just lets us verify which way the weapon is facing and we'll see here in a minute that there is a, a white line that is uh, pointing in the direction of the weapon. Cool. Now I add a new object called target and this is going to be the target that we'll line our weapon up with. So uh, to visualize that I'm just going to add a debug draw sphere component to that target and use gizmos.drawsphere to uh, basically just visualize the, the position of the, uh, the game object. And now we can see in the scene here that the target has now got a red sphere. Cool. Create a new script called Weapon IK and attach that to the agent. This is going to be the main script where we do all of the work. Start by creating three new public properties. One called Target Transform. This is going to be the red sphere. One called Aim Transform. This is going to be the Raycast node. And one called Bone. This is going to be the spine bone, which we'll see in a minute. Change update to late update and get the target position from the target transform. Now create a new function called Aim at Target, passing the bone as a parameter. This is going to be our spine bone. Now we need to rotate the bone towards the target by calculating the angle between the aim direction using aim transform dot forward and the target direction by subtracting the aim position from the target position. Calculate a delta rotation using quaternion from to rotation between these two vectors. And finally we can apply that delta rotation by multiplying out the bone transforms rotation property. Assign the target object to the target transform field and the raycast object to the aim transform field and finally the spine bone to the bone transform field. Let's test this out. Ignore the glitchiness there, we'll fix that in a minute. So we can see here that the ray is going towards the target but it's not exactly passing through so we need to improve this accuracy. This turns out to be really easy in fact. All we need to do is create a new public property called iterations and use this to call our function multiple times within a loop. Let's test this out. Now we can see the ray is passing directly through our target center. That was easy. The next step is going to be adding a weight so we can blend in and out this behavior. Create a new float property called weight which will clamp in the range of 0 to 1 using the range attribute. Pass the weight as the third parameter to the aim at target function. We can calculate how much influence our weight is going to have using quaternion.slur passing in the identity, this means no influence, and our aim towards which is our final rotation. Rotate the bone using the blended rotation instead. Now we can see when we adjust the weight it blends towards the target and back again. Now we're going to use multiple spine bones on the character instead of just a single one. And instead of assigning the bones directly we're going to use the humanoid features that the Unity provides. This lets us reuse the constraint across characters. Create two new arrays. The first one is going to use our new structure we just defined, and the second we're going to look up the bone transforms using the animator. Create the bone transforms array using the length of the human bones array, which is going to be defined in the inspector. Loop over each of the bone transforms and assign the bone transform by using the animator get bone transform, passing in the human bone definition. And now we can delete the bone property. Now we have multiple bones, we need to loop over each of the bone transforms, passing it into the aim at target function. We can just get the bone from the, uh, the bone transform array. Assign three new bones, one for the spine, one for the chest, and one for the upper chest. Now we can see everything is basically working as before and it doesn't look any different except when we adjust the weight we can now see the bones are having slightly different influence on each other. This makes the animation a lot smoother. We can make it even smoother by adding an individual weight to each of the bones. We can calculate the final bone weight for each bone by multiplying out the individual bone weight by the overall constraint weight and passing that into the aim at target function. 
Individual weights can now be assigned to each of the bones. It's up to you how you want to distribute these weights, but I prefer to have lower weights around the lower spine and higher weights at the upper spine. Cool, this is now looking really good. And we can actually apply uh, multiple blend weights and you can just adjust this until it looks exactly how you like. Now let's fix that glitching at the start of the animation. The first thing to do is clamp the angle so the character doesn't aim behind itself or anything that is too close. Let's start with the angle. Create two new public properties, one for the angle limit, which will set to 90 degrees, and one for the distance limit, which will set to 1.5 meters. Create a new function called get target position. This is going to adjust our final target transform by taking into account the angle to the target and also the distance. Now we can get the target direction by subtracting the aim position from the target position and also the aim direction by just getting the forward axis of the aim transform. Create a new property called blend out. This is going to blend back towards the forward axis of the character when our limits are exceeded. We can calculate the angle between the target direction and the aim direction and when the target angle is exceeding our limit then we increase our blend amount by the difference between our angle limit and the actual angle that we just calculated. We can calculate the final adjusted direction by blending between the ideal target direction and our default forward direction of our aim axis using the blend amount. Now we calculate the final position by adding that onto our aim transform. Now we can see when the target is placed behind the character, the character blends back to a default forward looking vector. Also when the target is going too far beneath or overhead the character. There's still an issue when the target gets too close to the weapon, the angles become very large and erratic. Let's fix this now. We can calculate how close the target is to the character by just taking the magnitude of the target direction. If that distance is less than our limit, it means the target is too close. So again, we can just blend out using the difference between the distance limit and the target distance. Now, if the target is placed too close to the character, it just starts looking forward again, which looks okay for now. Cool, it's looking pretty smooth. So far we've been assigning the target transform and the aim transform and the inspector, but when the game is running, we're going to need a couple of functions to assign the target transform and the aim transform at runtime. So just create a couple of new functions here and assign the aim transform and the target transform like this. Finally, we just check inside late update if either of these are empty, we just want to bail out and do nothing. It's finally time to integrate the weapon IK script to our main agent. So delete that fake agent and just assign the weapon IK script to our agent. We need to set up the chest and the upper chest in much the same way we did before. So just do that now. The aim transform needs to be assigned from our weapon when it's equipped. So inside AI weapons, get a reference to the weapon IK script. We want to wait for the equip animation to finish playing before we assign the aim transform. Otherwise it's going to look a bit weird if IK starts running while the animation is playing. So just create a coroutine here and first set the equip parameter to true and then just wait for half a second so we can ensure that the animation has started playing. Now we just check if the normalized time is less than one and if it is we just yield return null. This will just ensure that the animation finishes playing. When it is finally finished, we can set the aim transform to the current weapon's raycast origin object. Instead of activating the weapon inside the find weapon state, I'm going to create a new state called attack player and activate it in there instead. Create a new script called AI attack player state. This is going to be an AI state, so again, instead of inheriting from mono behavior, we just inherit from AI state and implement that interface. We need to add a new state ID called attack player and return this in the get ID function. Now inside the AI agent, we just want to register the new attack player state as we've seen before and just delete the enter update and exit bodies. Instead of calling activate weapon, we can now change our state to the attack player state and call activate weapon when we enter the state instead. Create a new function inside the weapon script called set target, and we're going to use this function to set the target to the player. I'm also storing the target as the current target in the weapon script. I'm not actually using this anywhere, but I figure it might be useful in future. 
Now when we enter the attack state, we can just call set target on the weapons, passing in the player's transform. This is going to go horribly wrong, unfortunately. Uh, the character spins all over the show and the weapon doesn't move, uh, and this is a problem. The reason for this is quite complicated and I wasn't really sure how to fix it, but basically it boils down to animation rigging. So I'm going to remove animation rigging entirely from the agent for now. This means we need to update the mesh socket class because previously it was using animation rigging and now we can't use it sadly. I'm hoping to fix this later in the future, but for now I want to focus on AI, not animation rigging. So I'm going to create a new intermediate object here called attach point. And this attach point is going to be parented to a bone transform. So we create two new properties here called offset and rotation. And we're going to set the local rotation and the local offset of the attach point. We'll set the offset and rotation properties in the inspector in a minute. Copy the previous position and offset values into the mesh socket class. Once you've done this, the offset object can actually be deleted. I think I forget to do it in this video, but uh, yeah, feel free. So we can test this out and everything looks good. Cool. Uh, there is still a, an issue. The agent is aiming at the player's feet. So we need to just add an offset here to the weapon IK script. Just create a new uh, target offset. And it's pretty simple. Inside our get target position, we just add that onto the, into there. Yeah, like that. <laughs> So now I'm just uh, yeah, adjusting the offset value in the inspector. I've gone into orthographic view here just to make sure the weapon is completely flat. Um, so 1.36 seems to do it for my character. And let's just test that out again. Let's just get rid of the gizmos. Cool. Yeah, so it looks like the player, the agent is aiming directly at the player, which is cool. So the very final thing, inside the attack player state, I'm just going to set the a nav mesh agent destination so the agent actually tries to chase the player inside update. And I'm also going to set the stopping distance of the agent to 5. So when we're attacking the player, we don't try to run all the way up to it. And I'm resetting it when that state is exited. So now I'm going to add three more agents just for testing. And each of them are going to find a weapon and then stop five meters away from the player. Cool, yeah, so everything is looking pretty good. And when we walk behind the agents, they, uh, they behave reasonably well. I'm happy with that. And that's it for this video, guys. Give it a thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. It really helps the channel. And subscribe so you don't miss another episode. Thank you to all the Patreon supporters this month. You guys are totally awesome. If you are interested in the project files used in creating this video, then head over to Patreon and the link in the description below. And we'll see you in the next video. Ka kite!